This is FCOA lesson 4 about weight use. Before you start using weights, it's good to gain understanding about the relationship between water pressure and air volume. And the best way to learn about this is by making your own syringe depth meter. What you need is a 3 ml syringe, a black marker, a lighter, a calculator can be handy, and a pen and a piece of paper. Ok, let's first look at how pressure builds up as we go down. Then after that we will look at how the pressure increases if uh, affects air volume. At 0 meters, the surface, we have a pressure of 1 bar caused by the air that is pushing down on us. And for every 10 meters we go down, we get an extra bar. So at 10 meters you'll have one bar of water pressure plus one bar of air pressure is a total of two bar. Now how about 20 meters? Well, you have two bar caused by the water, one bar by the air and the total will be three bar. And finally, how about 50 meters? Five bar caused by the water one bar comes on top of that, caused by the air. That's six bar in total. Now let's have a look what would happen to a one liter balloon that you bring down. This one liter balloon will shrink. It will still be the same amount of molecules inside, but those molecules get pressed together. If you want to know how big the balloon will be at 10 meters, you will have to divide The original volume by the new pressure. Ok, so what was the pressure again at 10 meters? 2 bar. The original volume is 1. 1 divided by 2. At 10 meters the 1 liter balloon will change into a half liter balloon. How about 20 meters? The original volume is 1 divided by 3, the balloon will be 1 third. And at 50 meters, 1 liter divided by 6, the balloon will be 1 sixth. Now knowing this, we can start making the scale or on our syringe depth meter. Place the plunger at exactly 3 meter to make your depth meter as accurate as possible. Now, when you dive to 10 meters, where will the plunger stop? The original volume is 3 milliliters and you have to divide it by the new pressure. Three divided by 2 is 1 and half. That is where the plunger would stop. So next to 1 and half you can write down 10 meter. How about 20 meters? Where will the plunger stop? 3 milliliters divided by 3 bar is 1. You can stop at 20 meters. At 1 milliliter the plunger will stop. How about at 50 meters? One mil 3 milliliters divided by 6 bar would be 1 half. Use a calculator if you need to. Next to a half you can write down 50. Ok, let's, let's write down two more depths. What is the pressure at 5 meters? If 0 meters is 1 bar, and 10 meters is 2 bar, then 5 meters will be 1.5 bar. 
3 milliliters divided by 1.5 is 2. So next to 2 milliliters you can write down 5. And lastly, what is the pressure at 2 meters? At 2 meters the pressure will be 1.2. 3 milliliters divided by 1.2 is two and a half. Next to two and a half, you can write two milliliters. And that's your skill. You finished your syringe depth meter skill. Now get a lighter and for about five seconds melt the top until it closes. Okay, then put it away for a few minutes because it has to solidify. It has to get hard before it will hold. Then tie a loop on the plunger so you can loop it around the dive line, ready for use. Like this. Don't tie it around your wrist because that would create an entanglement hazard. What you can see on the syringe is that in the first 10 meter you lose half the volume. At 10 meters you lose 1.5 milliliters of volume of your 3 milliliter syringe. While from 10 meter to 20 meter you only lose 0.5 milliliters. For that reason, in the first 10 meter of your descent you need to frequently equalize. But once you go deeper the need to equalize becomes less frequent. Also your lungs reduce half their size when you dive to 10 meters. And the amount of liters you lose are equal to the amount of kilograms body weight you gain. If you lose 3 liter, you become 3 kilograms heavier. On the surface you are floating, but as you go down you get heavier until at a certain depth you no longer sink or float. And that is your neutral point. That is when you can let go of the rope and you would not sink or float. You would just stay there. Now for some divers the neutral point could be as deep as 20 meters. Now by wearing a 2, point, two pound weight we will bring your neutral point closer to the surface, for example 10 meters. That would mean you only have to swim or pull till 10 meters depth. After that you can start gliding. Gliding is like falling down while holding your body in a streamlined position. Now on the way up you would have to work, swimming or pulling, but only until your neutral point. Above your neutral point you simply glide slowly floating up to the surface. On your next dive you will wear a 2 pound weight. It should be easy to release in case of an emergency. When you handle the weight belt always hold the strap end so that the weights can't accidentally slip off. When you dive down be aware that now you're likely to descend faster and need to equalize faster. Try to find your neutral point, then try to glide a few meters down. Your way up will take more effort as before. Again, once above your neutral point, try to glide up being motionless. That's it for rope work and weight use. If you have questions, ask, ask us in the Free Diving Coaches of Asia Facebook group. Our next lesson is coach training and medic first aid. See you then.